Hey, praise the Lord. Brother Clinton here once again. And you're watching the Word Prophet Channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, as Jesus Christ commanded. Praise the Lord. I got a letter from a sister tonight, and I just want to read to you a couple of sentences of her letter. She asked me about the woman at the well, uh, speaking of the woman that Jesus was speaking with in the, in the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to John. She says, Hi, Brother Clinton. I wondered if you could please give me clarification about the relationship the woman had with the husbands that Jesus spoke of to her. I have been taught all my life that she was a prostitute, and when she consummated with the men, that made them her husbands. She went on to say some other things, but I just want to stop there and, and address this. And there are, there are many people that have been taught many different things concerning many different portions of the scripture in, in the various churches that people were, were raised up in. And when we come to God and, and read his word, we begin to, when we seek him diligently by reading his word and, and obeying him, we begin to discover many things that were never taught to us in the churches. And, you know, it is so easy, and I've said this many times before, it is so easy for a man who's graduated from seminary and is very learned in his art to take a verse of the scripture, open up his Bible in front of a congregation and quote that scripture and everybody opens up their Bibles and, and sees that the scripture is there. And then they all close their Bibles and he tells a story that totally departs from the scripture and has nothing to do with what the Bible says at all. And everybody in the congregation says amen and claps their hands and they all say, my pastor preaches straight from the Bible. But their pastor is making up stories that have nothing to do with the Bible, and the only thing that he preached that is in the Bible is the verse that he showed them all before he made up his story. It's so easy to do that, and I've seen men stand in the pulpit and do it, and that's how most professional pastors make their living. And so, unfortunately, like this sister who wrote to me, she was taught a lie, and many many of us were taught lies. And there are, and as I'm speaking, please turn with me to the fourth chapter of the Gospel according to John in your King James Bible. There are many people who misuse the scripture in various ways, but there are many people who, who purposely misuse the scripture in order to find excuses to live in adultery. Adultery is a plague in these last days. Adultery is a plague in the churches in these last days. Most people in any denominational church that you would go to, and when I say denominational church, I'm talking about a building that is called a church with a name on the door that isn't Jesus Christ. It might contain the words Jesus Christ, but it isn't the Church of Jesus Christ. It's, you know, the Lutheran Church, or the Baptist Church, or the Catholic Church, or the Protestant Church, or the Pentecostal Church, or the Apostolic Church, or the Evangelical Church, or the Presbyterian Church. There's a million of them. You pick. doesn't matter. Um, a building that is called a church that has a name on the door. There is a plague of adultery in those churches. And that's because they are not the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're called by another name because they... They don't keep his word. They don't believe the doctrine of Christ. And so they had to denominate themselves, which means to choose a lesser name than Jesus Christ because they're not abiding in the doctrine of Jesus Christ. And because of that, there are a plethora of people in those churches who are divorced and remarried uh, when their spouses are still alive, and therefore they are living in open adultery before God and men. The Bible says, Whosoever shall marry her that is divorced from her husband committeth adultery. Period. Okay, If you are a man and you marry a woman who is divorced from her husband, if her husband is still alive, then you are living in adultery with another man's wife. Period. End of story. It doesn't matter what your excuse is. It doesn't matter what your testimony is. It doesn't matter if you think that, you know, God gave you many signs saying that he gave you this woman to marry. He didn't give you this woman to marry. Because the Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift cometh from above, from the Father of lights, in whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And the Almighty God, who is light and in him is no darkness at all, is not going to give you another man's wife for you to marry. Because he said in his word that if you marry a divorced woman, you're committing adultery. Okay? And that's the fact. And so there are no excuses, there are no exceptions. If you are a man and you marry somebody else's wife, you are living in adultery. 
okay? If, if a woman is divorced and her husband is still alive, she is still his wife. She is his flesh and he is hers. They are one flesh as long as they both shall live. What God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. And no judge has the authority to separate the covenant that a man has made with his wife. A judge may have the authority to grant a divorce based upon the contract or concerning the contract that a man and his wife made with the state. But that judge, that state agent, does not have the authority to divide asunder the covenant that that man made with his wife, the blood covenant that he made with his wife. And they are one flesh as long as they shall live. And so if you are a man and you're married to a woman who is divorced and her husband is still alive, then she is his wife and he is her husband and you are living in adultery with another man's wife before God and men. Okay, And I'm sure that most, you know, 99% of professional pastors will tell you that what I just said is wrong. But I'm speaking the word of God. And so if they say that what I say is wrong, then they're speaking against the word of God. Period. End of story. Whosoever shall marry her that is put away from her husband committeth adultery. And so, having said that, there are many people who try to worm their way out of obeying the Word of God and make excuses for their adulterous relationships. And one of the excuses they bring up is this woman at the well. And they say, well, the woman at the well, what about her? She had five husbands. Okay, and that's kind of a ridiculous argument that people bring up, and, and for that reason I usually don't even address it. But I want to address it here, not, not really as an argument for these people, but just to address the situation, because many people have asked me about this passage of the Scripture, and it's really very simple, and I just decided tonight when the sister wrote me about it that it's time that I just made a short video to address this, and so I got on my knees and I prayed about it. And then I turn on the camera, and here we are. So, in John chapter 4, starting in verse, let's see. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong chapter. John chapter 4, starting in verse 15. The woman saith unto him, and for those of you who don't know, I, I highly encourage you to read from the beginning of the chapter. But Jesus had to go through Samaria, and he met a woman of Samaria at the well, at Jacob's well, and it was the middle of the day, it was the sixth hour, which is about noon, and it was really hot, and so this woman came to draw water, and he asked her, you know, he said, give me to drink, and then they began to have a conversation. And so, in verse 15, it says, the woman saith unto him, sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that sayest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Praise the Lord. This is a perfectly simple passage of Scripture. There are many people that imagine that this, the fact that this woman had five husbands means that she was divorced and remarried four times. That is obviously not the case. Um, the, the most obvious reason that it is not the case is because she said, I have no husband. And Jesus, being a prophet, said, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. So the fact that she said, I have no husband, doesn't mean that she was divorced. It means that her husbands were passed away. Obviously. Okay? Also, the fact that her husbands were passed away is made obvious because a woman who is divorced from a husband would not be marrying other men. She would not be getting married to other men. And when Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands. Thou hast had five husbands. Okay, Jesus didn't say, Thou hast five husbands. He said, Thou hast had five husbands and now thou hast no husband. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. He was a prophet, and he knew exactly the, the details of this woman because his father had revealed it unto him. And if she had been living in adultery, if she had divorced her husband and married another man, then Jesus would have said that. But he didn't say that. He didn't say that she had divorced her husbands, any of them. He said, thou hast had five husbands and thou hast no husband. And the man that she was living with presently when Jesus was talking to her was not her husband. So it is evident from the scripture 
that this woman had had five husbands, that she got married and her husband passed away, that she got married to another man and he passed away and so on and so forth five times. And also that the man that she was living with at the time was not her husband. That's evident from the scripture. Okay? So there, there can be no using of this to try to say that it's okay for a woman to be divorced and remarried because this doesn't say that this woman was ever divorced. There's nothing in this conversation between Jesus and this woman that suggests that she had ever been divorced. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And there's also nothing in it that suggests that the fact that, uh, that, that a woman who has sex with a man becomes his wife. Okay? Having sex with a woman doesn't make her your wife. It makes you both fornicators. All right. And, and to the sister who wrote, whoever told you that this woman was a prostitute, I don't know where they got that from because the Bible doesn't say that she was a prostitute. The Bible says that she was a Samaritan woman and that she had had five husbands and that the man that she was living with presently was not her husband. That's all the information that we have about her. So I hope this helps you, the sister who wrote, and also many of you out there who might have been asking yourself the same question or might have been confronted with people who are talking to you about this woman. It's really very simple, and when we just read the passage of Scripture, combined with the fact that we understand the whole of Scripture, that we've read the whole Bible and that we know God, it's really perfectly simple. This woman was, the Bible doesn't say anything about her ever having been divorced from anybody. The Bible says that she had had five husbands and that the man that she was presently with when she was talking to Jesus was not her husband. Praise the Lord. It's just that simple. So may this message be a blessing to those of you who love the Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. If you have earnest questions, I'm here for you. You're welcome to make a comment in the section below, or you're welcome to also write me an email. My email address is found always right below in the information box. I am easy to entreat. I'm apt to teach, and I'm here for you in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brother Clinton. Peace to you. Amen.